Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Joseph. I am a Splunk admin at uh, Buttercup Enterprises. And today I have with me Raja, who is the leader for the data engineering team. Um, hi, Raja. How are you doing? Hey, Joe. I'm good. How are you? Doing good. Uh, so what brings you here today? Hey, Joe. So, you know, the reason that I asked for this meeting is that I'm looking at ways to reduce the amount of logs that we're ingesting into our Splunk Cloud instances. And this is primarily for two reasons. One, my team is telling me that, you know, we've had some new log data sources, such as the Palo Alto firewall logs and also some Windows 365 audit logs. And what they've noticed is that these log sources are extremely noisy mm -hmm. and that not all of that logs are actually very critical. And so we want to just only extract those critical logs that our team needs and only send those to these Splunk indexers. Gotcha. And in addition to that, you know, our security team has enforced some new policies, which is now enforcing us to redact some personal identifiable information from those logs before we can send it out externally to uh, an instance like Splunk Cloud. So that's the reason that I was kind of looking at some options. And I was told that you're working on a POC that's along the same lines. And I was at Conf earlier this year where I was introduced the concept of the Splunk Edge processor. And my understanding yes. is that the Edge processor should enable us to be able to do some of this. So that's why I'm very interested to learn about the proof of concept that you're working on. Absolutely. You, you've, you've come to the right place. And uh, just so you know, you're not the first one asking for this. There are several other teams in the in the, in the company who actually reached out uh, with, the, with the same problem. Um, and for, for us uh, or for, for all of you guys, I'm, I'm creating this POC to show uh, how Edge Processor can help. Uh, if you like, I can run you run us through a demo of, of yeah. how this can help you. Does that absolutely. sound good? Yeah, absolutely. Let's go through that, please. Okay. Okay. So what I have on the screen here is basically uh, the workflow of uh, how Edge Processor can help you. But before I uh, dive into the workflow, I, I wanted to check with you to see if you are planning on gaining value or, or you, uh, the data that you want to send to an archival uh, place like Amazon S3, would you be reading that data in the future? Yeah, so that's something of interest as well. Now that we're thinking about filtering out only critical logs, uh, mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that we can just drop the rest of the logs that we're getting. We still have to retain them from an audit purpose. Gotcha. Uh, that's why we're looking at sending it to our S3 buckets where we can just so, uh, store them. But however, we would still need them to be able to go run some searches you know, whenever we need to. And that's what I'm curious to understand if we would have to re-ingest all of those logs back into our Splunk Cloud instance, or if we can run those searches directly from Splunk that's connecting to the S3 instances. I, I understand that Splunk has something called federated search that's uh, going to enable us to do it, but I'm not very clear on how all of that kind of ties in with Edge, edge processor. So we'd love to hear you, uh, what you've done there. Okay, yeah, I mean, I, I also have that part of uh, the workflow set up uh, for you. So this this entire demo will be very useful for you. Uh, awesome. So I'll walk you through the workflow first. Um, for this particular demo, what I've done is collected my uh, sleep monitoring data. And what I'm doing is I'm uploading that, doc, uh, that data into a heavy forwarder. And what the heavy forwarder does is it's actually pushing that data into an edge processor. Now, within an edge processor, I've I've created two different pipelines. Pipelines are nothing but uh, the instructions that you give the edge processor from where when it collects the data, what you want to do with the data, uh, and then send it to an appropriate destinations. And here I have two pipelines configured. One is, you know, the first pipeline is sending data to a Splunk cloud index, and the second pipeline is sending data to Amazon S3. So this could be a pipeline that you can use to send uh, data to archive in Amazon S3. Okay. Uh, and I, I also have the workflow set up to show or search the data that the edge processor is sending to Splunk Cloud, as well as your Amazon S3 bucket. 
Okay, now what you're seeing on my screen is the raw data file that I'll be using to ingest into my heavy forwarder. Um, as you can see, I have uh, fields uh, that basically give me the overall score of my sleep. Um, it also has uh, a sleep log entry ID, which I'm treating as a sensitive field. Now let's look at the Splunk side. So here I have my heavy forwarder um, and in the heavy forwarder, I, I've basically just uploaded that file that you just saw um, into the heavy forwarder. And what, it'll, what it did was push the data to edge processor. Uh, this is what the UI for edge processor looks like. There's already several uh, predefined source types and I've configured a few destinations. And for this demo, I'll be using uh, this Splunk health index um, as one of my destination, that is the Splunk cloud platform. And I also have an Amazon S3 bucket uh, as one of my other target. So like I said, the two pipelines are configured here. Uh, let's look at the first pipeline. So in this, I have um, the data source coming in. And first, what I'm doing is I'm actually dropping the data that is not useful for me. And what I'm considering for that is I'm looking at the overall score of each of these entries and only sending data that has uh, that has a sleep score of less than 50 and 80 and is greater than 80. And then I'm extracting a few fields uh, that I think is useful for me. And then I also have um, a function that is actually replacing or, or masking the sleep ID field that I just talked about before. And lastly, it's sending it to a destination and the destination is uh, index in Splunk cloud platform. Okay. And the next pipeline is, uh, it's basically just taking the source and sending it to a destination, which is an Amazon S3 tier. So this basically just is sending your raw data to an Amazon S3 bucket. Makes sense. So now we have the data, both the data sets in um, the Splunk Cloud Index, uh, and that's the index it was pointing to. And as you can see, I have uh, only 17 events that came into my Splunk Index. Uh, it has retracted the sensitive fields, and you can also see the fields that I've extracted uh, using the function within Edge Processor. So the way I would look at Edge Processor is anything that's implementable on SPL2 can be done in S in edge processor before you send it to a Splunk index. Got it. Next, uh, let's also look at, you know, ways of uh, pulling data from Amazon S3, like you mentioned, you wanted to see or use it for audit purposes. Um, the way you would do that is create a federated provider um, and use that provider to create a federated index and use that federated index to search data on Amazon S3. So here, what I have is this uh, as my federated provider. And I'll go to the search app and look for that data. So what I'll do is I'll basically just pull all the information that's on uh, Amazon S3 um, and try to pull that into Splunk without moving the data. It's just referencing the data that's on Amazon S3. There's no data movement happening here. So this is what my raw data looks like. This is what you were looking for. Makes sense. So if I understand this correctly, what we're doing is we're filtering the sleep data that you have. And I like the fact that you chose a very simple data source such as the Fitbit sleep data. Cause you know, right now we have so many different data sources that I think this would apply to. And we need to figure out what the logic would be for each and every one of those. So this is a great example to kind of relay the story to, to the broader team on how they could leverage the edge processor feature, right? So what we've done is we've leveraged edge processor to filter out that sleep data, only send the relevant field or the relevant logs onto a Splunk Cloud Index. Absolutely. And then all the logs, the raw logs as is without any filtering is also being archived into an S3 bucket that's on Amazon. Absolutely. And not only is it sitting there, Splunk using federated search is enabling us to be able to search that data if we need to. Uh, so that, you know, we now have Splunk only running the sleep analysis on the required data. 
or if for audit requirements, I need to go search my data, it's still available on an, an S3 bucket. Is, am I understanding this correctly? Absolutely. Yes, that's that's exactly what's happening. Uh, so here Splunk is overall helping you send quality data into Splunk uh, and also helping you keep raw data at, at, an, at a place where, where you can store them at a cheaper cost uh, and also save it for long-term retention to comply with your uh, policies that you have in place. Awesome. Awesome. So if I understand this correctly, you know, we're on one filtering out the very verbose logs and we also extracted only what is critical based on the user conditions that are defined within uh, the pipeline that's an edge processor. And the edge processor also gave us the capability to mask sensitive information on the fly and then push yes. the mask data over to that Splunk index. And as, as the last one, we were also able to take all of the logs, the raw logs, and send it to a destination of our choice, which could be Splunk or an S3 bucket. Yes, exactly. Perfect. Perfect. No, this is this is amazing. I think uh, this is a very, very good uh, example of how we could put both uh, the Splunk Edge processor and the federated search to use. And I think uh, I, I can already think of a couple of use cases that would work for my team. 